Hey there, welcome to another video. So in this video, I'm going to teach you about polar coordinates. You go, why Leonard? Why do you have to teach me about a whole new coordinate system? I just got a handle on X, Y, like really good. Now you got to go and screw everything up and tell me about something brand new. Why do we do that? Why do we teach you something like X, Y coordinate plane and then all of a sudden throw something like polar coordinates at you? You go, hey, learn this too, because it's fun. It is fun, but honestly, it's, it's important. Uh, what happens later on in math is that polar coordinates, what I'm gonna teach you today, can actually make a lot of your math easier, especially in calculus three, some parts of calculus two. Sometimes graphing with polar coordinates is a whole lot easier than X and Y. Why? Because for things that are not functions, that don't pass the vertical line test, they actually become functions using polar coordinates, which means we don't have to break it up and graph it like piecewise functions, which can be really annoying. It also makes a lot of calculus easier for certain shapes. Um, things like spherical coordinates, things like cylindrical coordinates are based on this idea, polar coordinates, and then we extrapolate from there. So learning this, number one, can be a very, very useful tool now, can let you graph things that <clears throat> aren't even functions in x and y but are in polar coordinates can make certain uh certain things in calculus two and three a lot easier so that's that's why we're learning it so what in the world are polar coordinates polar coordinates are a way to graph points without using x and y in a rectangle but instead an angle and a distance and so here's the important things to know about polar coordinates polar coordinates have something called a pole acts like an origin and a polar axis, acts like the x-axis. And from there, we can go positively or negatively a certain angle, and then from that pole, a distance out, positive r or negative r. So the, the key features here are the polar axis is a whole lot like the x-axis. It's a horizontal line, but it does definitely have this starting spot, this, this pole that we, we treat kind of like an origin. So how polar coordinates work is an ordered pair, just like X and Y, but instead of X and Y, it gives you a distance from the pole, from that point, it gives you a distance from that point along a certain angle that that point makes with the X axis, or the polar axis, um, if we take a ray and go out on the angle. So, so basically we say, hey, here's where you start, go up a certain angle and then go out that distance and you will, you will reach a point. Notice how with a given angle, and a certain distance r, you will get a unique point. We don't get like several points here. We get one point for a given angle and a certain distance from the pole. So we're gonna practice the heck out of this. We have a lot of examples, but here's some things to remember. I hope that you remember that positive angles are measured counterclockwise, and the same thing happens here. If we have a positive angle, we'll measure it counterclockwise from our polar axis. Negative angles are measured clockwise, so we'd measure clockwise from our polar axis. Positive r is a distance from that pole along that ray that you make, really, from the polar axis. So we use our angle, counterclockwise for positive, and then from there, r is the distance along that ray from that pole. Negative r would be the distance along that ray in the opposite direction. And so we'd measure basically positive r and then reflect it about that pole. So we're gonna practice right now. Uh, one of the things to remember is that this ordered pair, while it is ordered, it's not x and y, it's r, the distance from the pole, and theta, which is the angle that we make to the polar axis. So let's try a few of these things. How about like two comma pi over four? One of the things that you used to here is just really the layout, like what the coordinates actually mean. So when we read two comma pi over four and we say these are in polar coordinates, the first number we come to is the r, is the distance from that pole. Now I want you to really recognize that positive r is gonna be measured along the angle that you just, you have right here. Negative r will be measured along that angle in the opposite direction of positive r. And so we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to those, those negative r's. The second number you get is an angle with that polar axis. So positive means counterclockwise and negative means clockwise. The first thing I do all the time in polar coordinates is really look at my angle and I find out where I'm at first. So if I'm talking about positive pi over four and this is my polar axis, and that's the pole, then I'm talking about from that axis 
going counterclockwise pi over 4. That puts us about here. I'm also going to show you how to do some of this on a polar graphing system uh, so you can find that sort of graph paper so like a, a graphing with polar coordinates and it pops up. But from here, we're going positive or counterclockwise pi over 4. It's about right there. So I know that my angle is given by that number, the second coordinate in our polar coordinate system. Um, so that ordered pair says, this is the angle you make with the polar axis. I've just done that. Now, along that ray that you have just created, you're going to go two units. How in the world are you supposed to judge two units? Right now, you're just kind of estimating or approximating two. On that, you can be very accurate. So I'll show you that in just a minute. But we'd say, okay, let's imagine this is one and this is two we would stop right here. That point is two units away from the pole and it's made an angle of pi over four with the polar axis. This is how we graph polar coordinates. It's just a matter of locating what your angle is doing and then going along that that angle, that ray that the angle creates, uh, the certain r or the distance away from the pole. Let's switch it up a bit. Let's talk about negative two comma pi over four. Now, negatives can be a little tricky for students to understand right, right at the beginning because what we're really doing is we're going pi over 4 as an angle, and then we're going to reflect about the pole. So anytime you see a negative r, really what it says is graph this like you normally would. Graph the, the uh, counterclockwise angle, graph the distance from the pole along that angle along the right, and then go in the opposite direction if your r is negative. So the whole process here would be, okay, I've got my negative 2 pi over 4. Let's find a ray that's at pi over 4 from the polar axis. Well, that would be such a ray. This would be pi over 4 from a polar axis. Now, let's go out positive 2 from there. Positive 2 from there. It'd be about there. So what negative 2 does is says, okay, now that that's positive 2, I'm just going to go in the opposite direction from that. If you remember, I talked to you a while back about, um, about negative r in some of our our sine, cosine, tangent, some of our trigonometry on the unit circle. And so if your r is negative, it reflects you about the origin. If your r is negative here, it does the same thing. It reflects you about this origin that we call the pole. So pi over 4, comma 2, it's here. Negative 2 just says, flip me 180 degrees, or pi, around that, that, pole, that pole right there. So we would just extend this the opposite direction. and go at the same units. This would be negative two comma pi over four. You've gone up pi over four and then the opposite direction of that ray from positive two. It can be confusing until you get the hang of it, but this is how the, these polar coordinates work. You use your angle first, positive goes along the ray you just created, negative goes in the opposite direction of the ray that you have just created. Now, is there a different way to look, look at that? Is there a different way to arrive at the same point, but with a different angle? Notice this doesn't contradict what I said about one r and one theta gives you a unique point. That's, that's true. Um, it doesn't give you two points at the same time. That would be non-function. But we can arrive at the same point in polar coordinates with different angles as well. So instead of going up pi over 4 and then reflecting for negative 2, could we get that exact same point with a positive r and a different angle? Well, what if we tried positive 2, comma, 5 pi over 4? So from our polar axis, we say we want to go 5 pi over 4. Man, I hope you remember what 5 pi over 4 would do. Pi over 4 is here. 
Then we'd have 2 pi over 4, that's pi over 2. 3 pi over 4, that's here. 4 pi over 4 would make pi. Think about why. 4 pi over 4 is exactly pi. So 5 pi over 4 would go all the way to pi, and then 1 additional pi over 4. Because our r is positive, we would go along that direction of that ray. So we'd say, okay, along theta, two units puts us right about, if that's one unit, puts us right about here, we would end up at exactly the same point that pi over 4 negative 2 does. And there's something that we're going to get from this. We're going to get that you can adjust r theta. There's ways to manipulate it. So r theta is exactly the same thing as... negative r comma theta plus or minus pi. What's that mean in plain English? It means that if you add pi to your angle or subtract pi from your angle and reverse the sign of your r, you'll end up at the same place. I'm going to say that again. If you add or subtract pi to your theta, it's going to put you 180 degrees or pi on the opposite side of that angle. If you reverse your r, you'll end up in the same place. So for, for instance, if I add pi to pi over 4, I get 5 pi over 4. If I reverse my sign from negative 2 and to positive 2, I end up at the exact same point. Exact same point. So th this is always true. r comma theta equals negative r and theta plus or minus pi. If you if you go on the opposite side of the pole, so add pi, and reverse your sign on your r, you'll end up at the same place. The other thing that we can think of is, much like on a unit circle, if you just keep on adding 2 pi, will you end up at the same point? Yeah, or subtracting 2 pi. So r theta also equals r comma theta plus or minus 2 pi. You can just keep on going around and around and around and getting the same point over and over and over again. So we can get the same point with different angles and with different r. I'm going to recap this for about 30 seconds. Um, what I'm going to do is give you a couple more examples and then illustrate how to use this, this graphing system on uh, the like polar coordinate graphing system, which is kind of nice. Save yourself from estimating what our angles are, which is what we've done right here. So the whole thing, the all about polar coordinates is they're very useful for graphing non-functions in terms of x and y, a lot of different functions, and they're used to make math simpler later on. So they're valuable to know. How they work is, is similar to x, y coordinates in that you're given two numbers in order and they do a certain thing. x told you how far to go along the x-axis, y coordinate told you how far to go on the y-axis, and you get a point at that, that intersection of x and y. We get something very similar here. We get from your polar axis, go up or go down angularly. Positive, you're going counterclockwise. Negative, you're going clockwise. That's the second number. The second number will always tell you what angle you need to make with your polar axis. From there, you'll stop, right? You'll stop at some angle. From there, the distance from the pole to where you stop along that, that ray that you're creating is given by R. So R says, once you've done this angle, measure, measure from the pole out and where that, that number stops, that is where your point is. That's exactly what we've done here. So two would be the distance from the pole to the point. Negative two, that's the distance from the pole to the point. Remember that while theta is positive counterclockwise and negative clockwise, R does something a little bit different. R says positive, you're going along the ray that the angle makes. Negative, you're going in the opposite direction of that ray. So basically you're adding pi to whatever this angle is. That's why I've told you this right here. You can always graph negative r comma some angle by adding or subtracting pi and getting back to a positive r. You can always change it like that, which is kind of nice. It saves us um, a little bit of a headache in dealing with negative r. That's quite a bit more difficult to deal with. Let's come back. Let's try a few more examples, and then I'm going to illustrate how to use that. All right, let's give a few more of these a try. How about 3 comma negative pi over 3? So if you're told that these are polar coordinates, we can graph them by really understanding the second coordinate first. That, that is the angle that you make with the polar, polar axis. What's negative pi over 3? Remember that positive angles move counterclockwise, negative move clockwise. So this is telling you from that polar axis, I want you to go negatively or clockwise pi over 3. That's going to drop a 
a third of the way from zero to negative pi. And so we're gonna do exactly that. So negative pi over three is about right there. So we're saying this is negative pi over three. Then look at your r. If r is positive, you're gonna go along that ray that you just made, three units. So from this pole, out one, two, three. We end up right about there. That's one point. Notice the, the ray keeps going, but your point stops. Your point is in one location. So the point is negative pi over three, you go out three units from there along that ray and you're done. This is the location of that point. Now, how about three comma five pi over three? Notice what's happening. I'm creating for you the same exact point, but we can get there three different ways. So if we talk about five pi over three, five pi over three is a positive angle. We're looking at this saying this is polar. I know my r, I know my theta, my theta is positive. So from my polar axis, I would go positive or counterclockwise, one, two, three pi over three would be right here. Five pi over three would be another one pi, two pi over three. So five pi over three is one, two, three, four, five. The exact same angle as this. Now, now think about this. One full revolution is two pi. Two pi minus pi over three is five pi over three. It's why it gives you this coterminal angle. So if we go five pi over three and then from the pole, it says, hey, you're going positive, positive three units. So I've made my ray, I'm going along there. One, two, three. That's going to give me the same exact location at that point. Now it's a different angle, isn't it? So it was done differently, but the location is the same. This also kind of shows you this. It says you're going to get exactly the same point if you add or subtract two pi from your angle. Well, that's what we did. Negative pi over three plus two pi. It's the same thing. It's just five pi over three. Same location, different angle. How about two pi over three uh, as your angle and negative three? 2 pi over 3 is positive. So we're going to measure this from our polar axis, positively or counterclockwise. 2 pi over 3 is 1, 2 pi over 3. About like that. However, negative r's are a little bit challenging to deal with because you have to remember to go in the opposite direction. So I would really imagine this to be kind of a dotted line, like this is this is my ray, but really I'm going to be going in the opposite direction, 180 degrees, completely different direction. Well, that's this way. And I would go along that three units. So positive three would be one, two, three here. Negative would be in the opposite direction. That should make sense. Negatives are opposite of positives. So if positive three would have been here, negative three would be in the complete opposite direction of that. One, to, this would be negative three. And we get the same location all three times. What this tells you, and actually you could change it. If you, if you took and said, I want to change my negative to a positive, what do I have to do? I have to either add or subtract pi. Okay, so let, let's do that. So here's what this says. I can change this to a positive, but I have to add or subtract pi to do it. Let's say that I add pi to this. If I add pi, two pi over three plus three pi over three is five pi over three. But I also said you could subtract pi and get the same thing. So if I want to change my negative r into a positive, all I have to do is add pi or subtract pi. I just added pi, I got that same point. Or subtract pi, two pi over three minus three pi over three is negative pi over three. That right there is why there's multiple ways to get to the same point. And I hope you see that. I hope you see that we can get to the same point in multiple ways because we can take negative r's, change them to positives. We, we have the ability to go across the opposite side of that pole given that negative r. So if we just add pi or subtract pi, we end up at the same point. If you take a different angle with a negative r, you'll end up at the same point. Um, 
that can be a little confusing because there's multiple ways to get to the same place, but it's also a little bit freeing because you can change, if you don't like negative r, you could change it to a positive by adding or subtracting pi. Hope that makes sense to you. Um, right now, what I'd like to do is take some of these and do them here. So imagine we had three comma negative pi over three. Here's how to use a polar coordinate system if it's given to you. These circles, these concentric circles going out, they count as units. So typically this would be one, two, three, four, five, all the way to nine. I've given you one half one, one and a half two, just so you can see, um, see it a little bit better. So I'm counting this as one, skip one, two, skip one, three, skip one, four, and then four and a half. Our angles are also given, which is so nice because you don't have to estimate them. So let's graph all of these and make sure that we're seeing the same thing. How would we graph three comma negative pi over three? Well, firstly, locate your angle. So if this is your polar axis, this is at zero or at two pi. Negative pi over three would be right down here Of course, my graph says 5 pi over 3. Hey. But the way we're getting there is different. Negative pi over 3 says you are going to go clockwise from your polar axis until you hit that ray. Now, along that ray, this one right there, we're going to go down three units. So, 1, 2, 3. That's it. That's where my point is. Now, a lot of times we like to show the polar axis. It's right here. And we also like to show the ray. It's a little bit easier to follow, but this would be negative pi over 3 as your angle and positive 3 as your ray. So 3 comma negative pi over 3. If we did five, uh, positive three comma five pi over three, we're doing the same thing. So here's your polar axis. We'd go five pi over three. Well, let's find it. Clockwise is negative, counterclockwise positive. So all the way here, it's pretty easy to find because they tell you five pi over three. And so we'd go, oh, okay, all the way around here. But we'd still go to the same exact distance from the pole. So we've done our angle counterclockwise because it's positive 5 pi over 3, then down 1, 2, 3, along that ray that 5 pi over 3 makes with our polar axis. That's the same exact point. This is really nice, actually, if you're going to do negative r. So with negative r, we're going to go to the same exact angle that we, we showed over here earlier. So we're going to go to positive 2 pi over 3. So let's see, from our polar axis up, 2 pi over 3 is right here. So I'm thinking this is the ray that's created by 2 pi over 3. I would go up, let's, let's see, 3 units from there. If I went up 3 units from there, that's 1, 2, 3. This would be positive 3. So how negative 3 comma 2 pi over 3 works is identify your ray, I've done it, and then negative 3 is graphed in the opposite direction of that. Well, look at that. The opposite direction, or 180 degrees, or pi difference, is along 5 pi over 3 or negative pi over 3. That's what this says right there. It says either one of those will give you the same point. So this says, hey, in the opposite direction of 2 pi over 3, is 5 pi over 3 or negative pi over 3, you're just going to put that point reflected across that pole, just like that. That's going to give you the same exact value. And so we move 2 pi over 3, graphed up 3, and then reflected across the opposite direction. Okay, we're going to work through a couple of them very, very fast, just to make sure that we're good at graphing this so we can move on a little bit and change from polar to rectangular, rectangular to polar coordinates, and actually understand what we're getting. So remember, all of these are ordered pairs. They start with the r, the distance from that pole along the theta, the second coordinate, the angle that that ray makes with that polar axis. So if we take a look at negative two comma zero, the angle is second. So zero says you are right here on that polar axis. Now, go negative two. What in the world does that mean? That means if you went out along this polar axis or along the ray that you just created, which is, n is nothing besides this. So go along two and then 
reflect that or add pi to it. You can always change this also. So if you wanted to change the sign, add pi. So change the sign of your r, add or subtract pi, either way. So if I change that to positive 2, I have to add pi or subtract pi. So this would either be positive 2 comma pi or positive 2 comma negative pi and will get you the same location. Now, you are graphing that point, but you're using, um, using a different point to actually assess where it's at. So, okay, so negative 2 comma 0 says you have, an, you have an angle of 0. This would be positive 2. Negative 2 would just be on the other side, 1, 2 units. Right there. If you wanted to do this, this would be positive pi and then go out two units from there, one, two. You're ended up at the same exact place. Okay, how about negative three comma pi? Use your angle first. So pi says we're gonna go all the way to here. Pi radians away from that, that polar axis. So we've gone an angle of pi. Now, if we had positive three, it would be one, two, three. Negative three says at this point, you're just gonna reflect this. So one, two, three, we'd actually end up right there. So negative, negative three comma pi says go pi and then reflect on the opposite direction of that. Could you change it? Could you find this out a different way? Change the value of your r, add or subtract pi to your angle. So I changed the sign of my r to positive three. I subtracted pi, that should be the same exact point. Here's an angle of zero and one, two, positive three, exactly the same. How about two comma negative five pi over four? Our angle second, negatives mean clockwise from your polar axis. So negative five pi over four, you might have to do some counting. Remember though that you're just counting pi over four or multiples of that. So negative pi over four would be one, two, three, four, five. This is the same thing as negative five pi over four. Now along that ray that we've just created from the polar axis, negative five pi over four, we're gonna go along that positive two. Oh, this, this is great. I like the positive r because I just have to go along that ray. So that would be one, two, right there. So we went negative five pi over two and then out two units along the ray that that angle makes with our polar axis. Can you think right now about what other angle you could use to get that? Maybe two. What could you do? Well, you could take positive three pi over four and go out positive two. You could take negative, let's see, uh, negative pi over four and do negative two, or you could do positive seven pi over four and negative two. It would all give you the same exact location. I hope that makes sense. I hope you're seeing the interplay. Uh, when you first see it, it's kind of weird. Hopefully now it's making more sense. You understand that the first number is the distance from the pole. The second number tells you the angle, just like on a unit circle. Um, the toughest part is the R. Negative R's can be a little tricky. Remember, that's the opposite direction of the angle that you're making. How about negative three comma 120 degrees? Our angle is 120 degrees, which doesn't work all that well on a graph intended for radians. But if you remember what 120 degrees is, it's actually two pi over three. So if we take a look at our unit circle or you can do your conversion, um, so kind of a quick way to do it is to, uh, to take 180 and, and 120 and simplify them as a fraction. So you would get that what goes into both numbers, the largest number? Well, well, 60. Pi over three is the same thing as 60 degrees. This is two of those things, so two pi over three. So that's gonna be 120 degrees right here. Now, we're gonna to go to that ray. So from our polar axis, we went to 120 degrees, but this says negative three. So I'm thinking, yes, this would be for a positive r. Negative r just reverses that, so instead of up here at 120 degrees, I'm going right across in that, right down here at five pi over three or negative 60 degrees or 300 degrees, any of those things. And I'm going one, two, three units.
So our angle was 120 degrees. We're just going in the opposite direction of that. Or go up three, one, two, three, and then reverse or change the sign. That would be negative three. That's the opposite direction. Uh, could you do it differently? You could arrive at the same point, but this is the one coordinate that they've asked you for. We could get the same point by changing the sign of our R. Now, adding or subtracting pi. Well, remember that pi is 180 degrees. So if I take 120 plus 180, we're going to get 300. Or I take 120 and I, I subtract 180, you're going to get negative 60. That's exactly what this is. This is either 300 degrees or negative 60 degrees. That's 5 pi over 3. I really hope it's making sense. I hope that you're seeing the interplay of negative r and the angle that you're creating with the polar axis. Right now, I'm going to take a look at one more example, and then we're going to call it good. Okay, last one. Oftentimes, uh, textbooks ask, ask this to, to get you to practice and understand the interplay between negative r, the opposite direction of r, and how to change your angles and arrive at the same point. It's very useful for what we're doing later in math. So first thing, can you plot the point r comma 3 pi over 4. Do you understand that 4 is the distance from the pole to your point and 3 pi over 4 is the angle that you make with the polar axis? Plot your point first. So if we take a look at this, the first thing we do is identify your angle. So positive means counterclockwise, I'm going to go to 3 pi over 4. Along that ray that we've created, we're going to go out 4 units. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4. So I've used my angle to make a positive angle or counterclockwise angle with the polar axis. I've gone out four units along that ray because we had a positive R. What if we would have want, had a negative R? You would have done this and then reflected it right down there. Now, the, the last three things that we're gonna do sort of play on the idea of can you find the same point by using a different angle or a negative R? Well, think about that. What if you wanted to keep your r positive, but you wanted this angle to be between negative pi over 2, or sorry, negative 2 pi and 0? How would you get there? Remember that you can add or subtract 2 pi and arrive at the same exact point. So instead of going this way, 3 pi over 4, if you subtract 2 pi, you would get there by undoing this a full circle. Well, what would that be? Just subtract 2 pi from your angle. If you take 3 pi over 4 and subtract 2 pi, you're going to get negative 5 pi over 4. Now, that's kept your r positive. That's created an angle between negative 2 pi and 0. Now, let's see if that's the same point. Negative 5 pi over 4 would take negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pi over 4. That's negative 5 pi over 4. And you kept your positive r, so you go along that ray. It's just measured in the opposite direction. The angle is measured in the opposite direction, isn't it? So negative angle instead of a positive angle. This is somewhere between 0, uh, negative 2 pi and 0 negative 5 pi over 4, and the same exact ray. This point is right there, just in a different angular direction. Now, what if you wanted to get to the same point, but you wanted your r to be negative, and you wanted to remain in 0 to 2 pi? So you want to end up there, but you want to use a negative r to do it. How we change to negative r is by adding or subtracting pi, or 180 degrees if you're dealing with degrees. So I, we can do that. Let's change r r, change the sign, add or subtract pi. Now, should you add or should you subtract? If you subtract pi, you're going to be negative. That's not what it's asking for. This says, I want you to keep your angle positive between 0 and 2 pi. So if I subtract pi, it would put me at negative pi over 4. While that will give me the same point with negative r, it's not the directions they've given. So I want 0 to 2 pi. I want to be, actually, I want to add pi. So if I add pi to this, it's going to put me right here at 7 pi over 4. So we can change the sign of our r by adding or subtracting pi. We can move outside of a period, or one full rotation, a revolution, by adding or subtracting 2 pi. 
We just have to follow the directions. Why didn't we add 2 pi here? Well, we had to subtract so that we fit what they're telling you to do. We wanted to add, subtract 2 pi to fit from negative 2 pi to 0. Here, we have to add pi so that we can change the sign of our r, but still fit in here. So 3 pi over 4 plus pi. Well, pi is 4 pi over 4, and so that would be 7 pi over 4. Now let's see if it works. If we go to 7 pi over 4, that's all the way right there. Positive 4 would be 1, 2, 3, 4 units along 7 pi over 4. Negative says you're going in the opposite direction that. That's the same exact point. Lastly, what if you wanted to keep your r positive, but you wanted to be from 2 pi to 4 pi? So one full revolution about that. What would you do? You're from 0 to 2 pi here. If you want to be from 2 pi to 4 pi, you'd have to go all the way around this circle one more time. You'd have to add 2 pi. We can always arrive at the same point by adding 2 pi. So 2 pi is 8 pi over 4. That would give us, let's see, 8, 9, 10, 11 pi over 4. Now let's see if that works. 11 pi over 4 should move us all the way around the circle one time and then a couple more, or three more pi's over four. So let, let's count. This would be, remember positive, so positive 11 pi over four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Here's 11 pi over four, and we go along the ray that this creates because we kept our positive r, that's what it told us to do, four units. One, two, three, four, exact same point. So I hope that this all made sense. I really hope that I've introduced this concept well enough that you can grasp it. We did a lot of examples so that you could grasp it, that you would understand your polar axis acts like an x-axis and that you start here all the time. You have a pole. The first thing we do actually is look at the second chord. It tells you the angle you're making with that polar axis. Uh, positive is counterclockwise. Negative is clockwise, like we would expect. Make our angle first. Positive R goes along that angle. Negative R goes in the opposite direction of that angle. We can always find the same point by changing the sign of our R and adding or subtracting pi. We can always get the same point by keeping our R exactly the same and just adding or subtracting 2 pi. It just moves a whole revolution around that circle. The negative R moves half a circle, but then reflects. That's really what's going on here. So I hope it makes sense. I hope I've shown you how to use the polar coordinate system well. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to talk about how we can convert from polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. It's not too bad. I'll show you that in the next video. Have a great day.